Alright, today I'm going to make a video for how to solve the quadratic equation. Actually, I seldom make uh, uh, this kind of simple video because I guess most of the students know how to do. But recently, there's few students actually asked me about quadratics. So, yeah, so I decided to make a short video on how to solve quadratic. I hope this video can actually help the student understand how to solve this kind of question. Alright, so over here you will see a simple quadratic equation, but how do I know this is quadratic? Eh? So first thing is, I understand after I expand the equation, I should see something like h power of 2. So whenever you see the equation, the highest power is 2, we call it quadratic. Uh, we don't care is h square, y square or x square. As long as you see power of 2 is the highest powers in the whole equation, then this one we call it quadratic equation. Alright, so yeah, we have few ways to actually solve the quadratic equation if you ask me. Of course, the first method is just a simple factorize. We'll just factorize and solve it. And then the second method, uh, we, can use the, we can use the formula. We can use the quadratic formula to solve it. And then last is the normally seldom happen in SPM is using the completing the square methods. Right, but if I do this kind of question, I always recommend my student, if you do this kind of question, I always recommend you to use the first method. I mean, use the first method over here. Okay, if first method doesn't work, then you go for the formula. And normally you don't do the third method unless the question asks you to sketch a graph or find a maximum or minimum point, then only you will go into the completing the square. Right, but whenever you want, okay, now we are focusing on quadratic. Alright, whenever you want to use any of this, right, for quadratic, you always need to change your equation, which is this equation, into the general form. What do I mean by general form is, general form of the quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0. Alright, this is we call general form of the quadratic equation. So that means you have to make sure your equation into the general form pattern, then only you will start to factorize or use the formula or even do the complete square. But one of the very important pattern of the general form is the whole equation must equal to zero. And then x squared we normally put in the first place, second place will be some number with the x and the third place over here we will only put the constant number, I mean just a number without x. Right, so the first thing is, um, of course, over here you might think we don't have any x. What? How do I put it in the general form? So maybe in this case, the general form is a h square plus b h plus c equals to zero. A b c over here is just some constant number. It's just a random number over here. Right. So first thing I will do from here is I will expand the equation. So I expand the equation. So. You should know first one multiply the first one, second one multiply both of them. Alright, so 2h multiply the 2h, I get 4h power of 2. 2h multiply 2, I get 4h. And 1 multiply 2h is 2h. And 1 multiply 2 is plus 2. Equals to 6. Because 6 is over here, uh, still still remain here. I said the general form must equal 0. So eventually I still need to move my 6 to the other side to make it equal to 0. So over here, 4h squared, there's nothing I can do for it. And then we we know that the 4h can plus together with 2h, isn't it? Yes, because they are same power, we can plus, you get 6h. And then we have 2, right? If I move the 6 to the other side, the 6 actually will give me negative 6. You got positive 6, move to the other side, you get negative 6. So 2 minus 6 will give me negative 4 equals to 0. Yeah, you might be able to start to using all the formula of factorize from here. But normally, I will do one more step. Is I, I will always check whether this equation can be further simplified or not. Yeah, can be further simplified or not. So, yeah, obviously, you can see over here is all even number, right? So I can try to do the whole equation by divided by divided 2 here. So if I divide 2 for a whole equation, this is what happened. So that's mean, that's mean, I divide 2 here, I divide 2 here, I divide 2 here, and I divide 2 here. That's mean I divide 2 for every single one. 
All right, so you might think, how about divide 4? But then the problem is 6 cannot divide 4 to get an integer. You will get a fraction, which is I do not want. I always want integer. All right, so yeah, this one after divide, I should have 2h squared plus 3h minus 2 equals to 0. Because 0 divided by 2, you still get back 0. All right, then I will try to factorize. I draw the two bracket over here equals to zero. All right, so over here I'm going to teach you uh, some basic factorizing skill. All right, um, okay. Later after I do the factorize, right? Normally this term and this term, I will multiply them. I should get the first term, and then, and then here you should have another number here. Normally. The term which h I will put in the first place. Second place here I will put a number. This number multiply this number over here. I should get the third term over here. All right, they are multiplying. Huh? Okay, I I'm going to show you what I'm talking here. So you think it's about two h square. How to get two h if I want to two term multiply each other to actually get two h? So definitely is h multiply two h, or you might argue is two h multiply h. So both of them is the same. So in order to get 2h squared, basically uh, this this is the easiest way to get. Of course, you might think about a lot of fraction like half h multiplied 8h, something like that. We don't do that. Okay, we focus on integer. All right, so over here, I'm going to put 2h multiplied with h. So you, you can see 2h multiplied h will give me the first term, right? 2h squared. All right, then, then I want to get the number negative 2. You're thinking what number multiplied in order to get negative 2? Basically, we can have something like 1 multiply negative 2. We get negative 2. Or, you, yeah, you can say uh, negative 2 multiply 1 is the same, alright? Or you can say negative 1 multiply 2 will give me negative 2 as well. So right now, I have two options here. So then I, I will need to think like which number I need to... Which number, uh, which number I need to use. Alright, I will give you some ideas. I randomly, let's say I put the first one first, then only I try second one. I, I want you to see the difference. If I put 1 and negative 2, 1 and negative 2. So definitely 1 will be positive 1, right? Alright, then the next thing is we need to focus 3H. How to get the 3H? Okay, you know you get the 3H over here, right? You basically, you need to cross multiply the number here. So basically, what do I mean is like now the, the blue color one multiply with the green color one. This one, 1 multiply h will give me 1h. And then this number, going to multiply like this, 2h multiply negative 2 will give me negative 4h. Then from here, the number here, I will need to plus them together. I will need to plus them. So you just imagine h minus I mean h plus negative 4h will give you negative 3h, isn't it? But this is not negative 3h. This is positive 3h. So therefore, I know maybe the number I insert here is wrong. So therefore, I will need to change a bit here. So just now, I already tried the first combination, which is doesn't work. So then, I will try the second combination. The second combination over here is basically negative 1 and 2. Because my objective, I want to get positive 3h, right? So then I will try again here. Negative 1 multiply h will get me negative h. And then 2h multiply positive 2 give me 4h. And then I will plus them. Isn't it? If I plus them, negative h plus 4h, I get positive 3h, isn't it? Then I can get the middle term. Then this is my equation. Alright, it doesn't seem easier. I mean, it doesn't seem very easy if, if you never do this. But this is how I actually do very fast in factorize. Of course, you need to practice until you can see, see it until very fast. Yeah, I guess practice make perfect. Or of course, you can still use the calculator to do this. But anyways, I, I will not go too far from the technique here. Of course, I believe you still learn some uh, the table technique, right? Yeah, you can always do that also. But this is how I practice myself. All right, so anyways, let me finish this question. All right, so then after you got the answer already, um, you need to further find out what is the h value. So you need to continue do. 
so what we will do is after we factor we have two bracket right the bracket actually they are multiply each other they are multiply each other so what we can do is we can say 2h minus 1 will equal to 0 or h plus 2 will equal to 0 yeah we can say this too and you might ask me how do i actually get this equation so so you can try to imagine something like this so if today i have the equation like this one 2h minus 1 and then h plus 2 equals to 0 so if i move the h plus 2 to the other side i actually getting 0 divided by h plus 2 right but you understand 0 divided by anything you get back 0 right so therefore you get the first equation 2h minus 1 equals to 0 yeah, then I will do the same thing for second equation. I say, well, how about I move the 2h minus 1 to the other side? It's 0 divided by 2h minus 1, right? So 0 divided by anything, you get 0. So therefore, you get the second equation is equal to 0. So over here, why do I use the all over here? Because you have two possibilities here. You might get this one or this one. So if I solve this thing, basically, I will get h equals to 1 over 2 and h equals to negative 2. Okay, you might think, what is the meaning of it? Okay, meaning is another thing you need to understand. But if you are just a modern math student, you do not you do need to actually uh, know so much. But just for extra knowledge. So the meaning is like, if you get a h equals to negative 2 or 1 over 2, that's mean. That's mean if I substitute my, my negative 2 into this equation, I mean into this equation easier. Yeah, you can substitute into either one. You should get equals to zero. That's mean if I substitute one over two into this equation, I will get zero. Okay, but you will get zero also means what? Okay, then you will go into a little bit of the graph here, the graph thing in here. So that's mean, let's say I will assume uh, my y1 is the equation 4h squared minus 6h minus 2 minus 4. My y2 is the second equation is equal to zero. Okay, this part is not about the factorize, but it's something uh, you it's good for you to understand if you want to know what is the meaning of the answer over here. So if I substitute my first equation into the second equation, actually we are finding the intersection point. We are finding the intersection point. Okay, but what is y equals to zero look like? Y equals to zero basically is, is the x axis, isn't it? X axis is basically y equals to zero. And this equation, you might not know how it look, look like. Okay, it's very complicated. So I will just assume it will look like this. So if I have the graph like this, and this one, um, okay, I just assume, uh, okay, this is not very accurate. You need to get accurate. You either do differentiation or combine a square, right? So, you okay? This is the this is the line y equals to zero, isn't it? This is the line y equals to zero, which is my y one, and this is my y two, which is four h square minus six h minus four. So when these two equation they intersect each other is over here, isn't it? So therefore, your answer might tell you one is negative two the other one is one over two so that's mean is their intersection point so that's mean the answer over here is basically is their intersection point between these two equation okay so yeah you you will understand this one better if you learn graph function yeah you will know what i'm talking about but okay over here yeah this is basically how we solve the quadratic equation basically you need to expand it you need to expand it already then you're trying to simplify it see whether you can make the number smaller or not then you can apply these methods okay you might think how about i do not know how to factorize am i dead about this question not necessary you can always use the second methods okay so i will go to quickly about second method your second method is just about the formula but the second method should give you the same answer as well. So that's mean, if I will use the second method over here, um, I will just apply the formula. What is the formula? x equals to negative b plus minus square root b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. 
right this is the formulas of course you need to know what is your a b c over here okay you can use the uh, before simplify or after simplify both equations should give you the same result but because i do, do not like my number so big so i will use this uh i will use the second equation over here so based on the second equation here i know my a is a number beside x h square right is two my b will be three and my c will be negative two okay this is a this is b this is c all right because i already arranged in order if your equation is not arranged in the order then you need to rearrange them all right so then i will just apply my formula x equals to negative b plus minus square root of b square which is 9 minus 4 a is 2 c is negative 2 divided by 2a 2 multiply 2 a is 2 right then i will solve this one quickly this is negative 3 plus minus this one should be square root uh this one is 8 16 so this one is 25 you can use a calculator for this one divided by 4 so therefore i actually i have two different because of plus minus right because of plus minus i basically i should have the two different equation here and square root 25 is 5 huh? all right so i should have x equals to negative 3 plus 5 over 4 or x equals to negative 3 minus 5 over 4 so yeah this one is 2 over 4 is 1 over 2 this one is negative 8 divided by 4 is negative 2 so therefore you realize my answer is the same <laughs> and i just realized i made a common mistake which is i use the x here but over here you don't have any x right you might be very confused about that that's mean i will need to change all my x to h because we are having h here all right so yeah this is how we get the answer for h are uh, using the formula all right in this video i'm not going to cover about complete a square because you might be only the the modern math student yeah you might not learn about the formula as well then you have no choice you only can use the first method yeah second method actually is quite easy if you know the formula you just use it of course i guess most of the time students will just use the calculator i believe i do make a video to teach you how to use it uh, by only using the calculator to get the answer all right i guess this video is way too long i hope you at least you can learn something from this video if you still think the graph part is make you very confused just ignore it all right so i'll see you guys around bye